Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Minister Denise. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Eric. Reverend Joshua. Um, Elder Nicole. God bless you. Good evening, Trisha. Good evening. Good evening, Eric. Leslie. Good evening. Amanda. Good evening. God bless you all tonight. Leslie. Michelle. God bless you. Hey, Eric, with each passing day, that baby is getting beautiful and beautiful. My God, that is such a pretty child. She has such personality. And so God bless her. Amen. Pamela, God bless you. Good evening. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. So we're going to begin shortly. Pastor Lenny, God bless you. Um, amen. And so we're going to begin shortly. Um, so let's get our hearts and minds ready. And, uh, and we're going to begin the study of tonight's teaching. Amen. Truly God is worthy of all praise and so I thank each and every one of you for coming. Sylvia, God bless you. Thank you, Eric, for sharing the video. And those of you who have not done so already, would you mind sharing the video with your friends so they'll know that we're on? Melinda, God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. And thank you for joining me this evening for tonight's Bible study. Um, truly, God's word is so powerful is so powerful and we can learn so much from his word and so tonight joanne god bless you listen we have a lot to cover and i don't think we're going to be able to cover it all tonight um because it's so powerful and uh it's something that we all need to know siobhan god bless you um and so it's it's a very important subject um this subject of children and, and Lord, I need help <laughs> with these children. Um, and many of us have experienced the challenges with our children. God bless you, Minister Dion. God bless you. Amen. And so let's begin tonight's study in prayer. And thank you, you all, for sharing the video. God bless you, John and Angela. God bless you. Amen. And so let's begin in prayer, asking God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this time of sharing. God, we thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you have given unto us. And Father, we thank you for your word, for your word is truth. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And so we thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we accept your word as being the authority. We accept your word as being the ultimate truth. And because of that, Lord God, we are eagerly awaiting for you to speak unto our hearts. And so grant us, Father, holy wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless us, Lord God, that we might, Lord God, be able to dispel um, myths and untruths, Lord God, and that, Father, we would accept your word and your teaching as being absolute. Father, we glorify your name and we thank you for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So bless our time together. Give us free flow, God. Allow us to speak freely of your holy word. And I pray, God, that you would allow each of us to receive your truth. We thank you, Lord God. And Father, we ask that you would bless our families, bless our children, cover them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that you would speak to their hearts and those children that are wayward, those children that are disobedient and rebellious, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would transform their thinking, transform their hearts. Father, I pray that you would create in them a clean heart and renew in them a right spirit. I pray for each and every parent, Lord God, that will be watching tonight. I pray, God, in Jesus' name that you would give each of us practical information that might help us, Lord God, in our parenting. And that, Father, if we stand in need of correction, give us correction. Father, if we stand in need of help or assistance, give us help and assistance. Father, we look to you, for you are the source of our strength and the strength of our lives. And so we thank you right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. So God bless each and every one of you that are watching tonight. And if I didn't get an opportunity to say hello to you personally um, while I was praying, um, please forgive me and accept this generally to everyone, but specifically to you. Good evening, everybody. Amen. And so tonight we want to talk about our subject matter is Lord, help me with these children. And subtext, my baby no longer wants to be my baby. <laughs> you know, it is amazing. And firstly, let me let me give this disclaimer, okay? Nobody is the total authority on raising children except God, okay? And one of the first things I would hope, I would hope that each of you that are watching tonight, that you each have your mind made up to follow what God says. Um, I will tell you that if you have not made up your mind to follow what God says, then many of the things that I will share with you out of the word of God, you won't like. You won't like. Um, but, but if you're willing to follow the word of God, God's way is always the best way. It's always the best way. And we waste so much time trying to do things our way. We waste so much time trying to teach our children the things that our parents taught us. And you know what? Some of those things that our parents may have taught us may have been right. But think about even in your own life. There are some things that you may have done or said around your children that you probably wish you could take back. Um, there may have been things that you have said, and maybe your child, when your child was an infant, you may have cussed somebody out. You may have said something that you shouldn't have said and not realize your words are like seed, seed that are planted in the life of your child. And so the first thing I want to share with you as this disclaimer is, first of all, God's word is true. God's word is true. The second part is um, God's word is perfect. And the third part is, we are not, okay? So let's disarm ourselves with our defenses when sometimes the word comes and it may challenge us. Sometimes we tend to take it personal, take it personal as if someone is saying that we're not a good parent. Listen, you must understand that as parents, as human beings, we make mistakes. There's a lot of people that may condemn you. There's a lot of people that may uh, demonize you. There's a lot of people that may, you know, push you to the curb. But let me tell you something. As parents, we make mistakes. Your mama made mistakes. Your grandmother made mistakes. Your grandfather made mistakes. And guess what? Let's disarm ourselves. We make mistakes. And um, I want to set that as a tone first, that this is not um, Pastor Rodney telling you what, what you're doing wrong, or this is not a Pastor Rodney telling you how to construct your household. What I want to do is share with you out of God's word, some specific scriptures on raising children. And my prayer tonight is that the Holy Spirit who knows why he's giving these scriptures, that the Holy Spirit would speak to your heart. And what my hope is, is as the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, that you would say, yes, you, you would say, yes, Lord. No matter how much it hurts, no matter how much it goes against the grain, no matter how much it goes against your normalities, no matter how much it goes against what your mama taught you, your grandmother taught you, your great-grandmother, I don't care who it is, right? I want the Holy Spirit to speak to your hearts tonight and over the next, however long we go over this, this particular subject. Um, because as I started reading and started learning different things, I found out some things that was pretty interesting. And, um, and even some things that challenged me. And so firstly, I want you to look with me in the word of God, okay? Let's go into uh, Proverbs chapter 10. 
Proverbs chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. Because tonight we want to learn about some things about children. Now, before we read this scripture, and we're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 10. And let's, well, I'll tell you what, let's start with the scripture. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 17. Okay. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, he who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is that never defend your children when it comes to being wrong. Never defend your children. I know that's your baby. I know that's your boo. I know that's your little man or your little girl. Never defend your children when it comes to being wrong. The word of God says that if they keep instruction, it is in the way of life. Now, what does that mean? What that means is that the road to life is a disciplined life. Okay? If we ignore correction, we are lost for good. That's what that verse means. The road to correction or, or, or the road to life is a disciplined life. So one of the first things we need to know as parents, that's why one of the first thing God tells parents, he says, parents, train up a child in the way that they should go. For when they are old, they won't depart from it. That training is a disciplinary. It is, it is something that you instill discipline. You instill correction in them. You instill um, honor and respect in them. You instill that in them. Why? Because in this world, there are so many, um, there are so many entities and so many things and so much stimulus that causes your child to do otherwise. It causes your child, think about this. We all know that smoking can produce cancer. We all know that drugs can impair your behavior. We all know, prayerfully, each of y'all watching know this, that alcohol impairs your judgment. We know this. And so if our children have chosen, or if we, for that matter, have chosen to drink, have chosen to smoke, have chosen to get high, have chosen to do things that are um, that are unlawful or have done things that are not wise for their bodies, then my friends, that is a sign of a lack of wisdom. It is a sign of a lack of wisdom. Now, listen, this is not about any ethnicity, but this is about all of us. A child, the word of God says, a child that is spoiled will bring their parents to shame. I want you to understand that. You have to understand that if you choose as a parent to spoil your child versus teach them discipline. Now, there's a season. When a baby's an infant, you know, that baby receives a lot of attention. That baby receives everything they want. Why? Because they can't do on their own. But as they start learning different things, like, for example, Eric's baby is a, is a little baby, a little infant, right? But recently, the, the baby is now um, holding a regular cup or a better cup than just a sippy cup, holding their own cup. So now what happens is that now is the time to start teaching that child discipline with that cup. And as that child grows to keep teaching and instilling discipline, all the while instructing the child in the ways of God. Because it is the knowledge of God, it is the understanding of God, that it is wisdom and knowledge that gives that child the ability that when they're outside of the home, 
when they're faced with wicked friends, when they're faced with evil people, it gives that child the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to handle themselves when you're not there to protect them. See, when they're babies, we cover the outlets, we cover the, we lock the doors, we close the windows, we put bars on the windows, we put, you know, you know, things around their crib to protect them. We put, you know, certain things around them to protect them. But listen, I'm here to tell you, no matter who you are, there's going to come a time where your child is going to be on their own. There's going to come a time. It may be an hour. It may be three hours. It may be during school. It may be in the daycare center. It may be with the babysitter. That child is on their own. And I'm here to tell you, people of God, that God gave that child to you. And you are the best one to take care of that child and to nurture that child. So when you choose to put that child in anyone else's hand, including grandma, including grandpa, including cousin, nephew, brother, sister, including whatever, you, the parent, do not have control at what goes on in that child, in that child's eye gates, what goes on in that child's ear gates, what goes on in that child's feelings. You have no control of it. Good evening, Lamont. God bless you. And so it is important for us to know that because we live in a world where we have to work and oftentimes both parents have to work, then you have to, um, one, make wise choices with who takes care of the child. Number two, you have to make sure that you never abdicate your responsibility to teach this child the disciplines of life and, and the, the, the knowledge and understanding of God. Now, Here's a disclaimer. Many of us, maybe when we had our children, we didn't know this, so we didn't do this. And maybe our children are older and we're going to learn how to deal with that as well. Okay. But right now I need to start with the beginning. And so what happens is that when we have these kids, it is our responsibility. God holds us accountable. Did you teach your child discipline? And did you teach your child the ways of God? You can, you can put them in karate and you could try to make karate give them disciplines. You could put them in, in this, in cheerleading. You could put them in gymnastics and sports and you can try to pass off the responsibility of teaching your son and your daughter discipline to somebody else. But I'm here to tell you that you run the risk that not only will they teach them discipline, but they will also teach that child their own way. And I'm talking about even family. I'm talking about family because remember this, husbands and wives, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. The word of God says for this cause, before you had the child, for this cause shall a man leave his mother and father. That means the wife also leave their mother and father and cleave to one another. And it is that cleaving to one another that God says he desires godly seed. So a lot of people, you let down your guards when it comes to mama, when it comes to grandma, grandpa, you let down your guards and you let them deal with the child. However, you don't know the level of what they will say, who's in their presence, what conversation they will have, whether they think it's good, evil, right, wrong, whatever, whatever your child sees. And what happens is that it teaches your child a lesson that later on you will have to deal with. Because if that child gets instruction from somebody else, then that child will grow up and usurp your authority. I want you to hear me tonight. I want you to hear me tonight, okay? Um, yeah, yeah. Did you teach them discipline and did you teach them the ways of God? It is important to know that it is ultimately your responsibility. You cannot pass it off to no one. You cannot pass it off to anyone. And I'm and specifically, my God, help me, Holy Spirit. Specifically, I want to tell you, be careful to not even pass it off to family members because family members 
will teach your child in the way the child should go from their perspective. And sometimes grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, whatever the case may be, will teach that child how to be spoiled. And maybe at first, the child will not dishonor you. But later on, that child will usurp your authority because they will cling to the one who is helping them um, uh, be free. Now, discipline, the word of God says, discipline is not pleasurable for the moment. So that means, parents, you have to get used to not, um, you have to get used to not trying to be your child's friend and not trying to be um, the good, 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 good parent. The parent that always gives the child everything because maybe sometimes you don't spend a lot of time with the child. So, you know, because you're at work and maybe you got school. And so when you get the child, you try to lavish all these different things on them. You don't have time for that because it is important to know that time waits for no one and you must prepare them for life without you. You must prepare them for dealing with the world when you're nowhere around. You must prepare them to deal with the situations of life. Yes, spare the rod, you spoil the child. And the word of God says that if a child that is spoiled, a child that is spoiled will bring you to shame. It is important. You have to understand this. So, this idea of, oh, I'm going to spoil my baby and I'm going to give them. And listen, grandma and grandpa will spell, spoil your child. It's still going to bring you to shame. It is important because, listen, I have a grandbaby. And, you know, when I see, you know, when you see your grandbaby and it's not your baby, you know, you want to lavish a whole lot on that child, Right? You want to lavish on them. And then sometimes you may find yourself because you're talking to your child, you're talking to your child as a child because your child is your child. But understand this, your child is also their parent. And oftentimes what happens is that grandmother and grandparents, right, grandfathers and grandmothers, they will... Uh, belittle the parent in the eyes of their child. They'll belittle. And, and this, is, this is so essential for us to understand. Listen, we're, tonight, I don't think we're going to have time to get past the foundational truths because we may have to go over this thing over and over again. And, and I'm telling you, if you can understand this, then you'll take very seriously your responsibility. Now, we got so many different nuances because now you got families that are, are split families where you have mother raising children and the father is not in the home or maybe you have divorce and separation or maybe you have um, diaphus and child support issues and maybe you have a lot of things that have come in between us. But understand this, God in his infinite wisdom chose to put the spirit of that child in that baby that was produced by you and that man or you and that woman, okay? And so when God puts that spirit in that child, God in his infinite wisdom says that within the two of you is all that is necessary if you take it seriously. If you take it seriously, it is all that is necessary for you to raise this child. Now, in the situation where you have a mother or father who is born again and a father who is and an other spouse who is not or the other parent who is not saved or who are corrupt in their ways, then it is essential for you as parents to pray that God would send that other half, mind you. And you have to be careful not to make that other half your boo. Do y'all hear me? You have to be careful not to make that person your boo because you convolute the, you, you confuse the whole situation 
And then sometimes the person that God is sending you, he's sending a father figure. For some of you women out there, he's sending a father figure into your child's life to help them understand from a man's perspective the importance of, of, of that, that father's love. But sometimes you women, you get it confused and you start to ostracize the child from that man because deep down inside, all you want to do is have a relationship. All you want to do is have a sit down moment, a squeeze, squeeze moment, a kiss, kiss moment. And you have to understand that God promises to never leave you or forsake you. And for those of you who are single parent, parents in your life, you need to be careful because sometimes the person that God is sending in your life, they are fussing about your child and they're telling you the right things that you should do. But because you feel like this is my child, you end up telling them, don't tell me how to raise my child. Not realizing that maybe God sent that person to help you do what you can't do. It is important. God is so marvelous. He promises never to leave us comfortless. He promises. And this is why we have to humble ourselves and we have to deal with this issue of lust because many of us have only went to produce children because of lust, not because of love. We produce children that are in this world and now these children are born from a relationship of lust and now they start off in need. They start off, let me see, what do you do with a man, husband, who didn't raise his kids but want to beat on your children? Okay, well, Michelle, I, I will tell you flat out. I'll tell you flat out. Number one, number one, here, here's the interesting thing, is that if you are dating a man that is abusing your children, what do I mean by abusing your children? I mean that if they are physically abusing your children and causing harm to them, and I'm talking about that there is no reason. Now, let me say something that most people, some of y'all may disagree with. Listen, there is nothing wrong with discipline and there's nothing wrong with spanking. However, li listen to me carefully. The one thing that I've always said in my life OK, that I'm a disciplinarian and I will um, I'm a disciplinarian and I will discipline my children. However, let me share this with you. Right. It is important to know that this I will never discipline my children if I am angry. Never. None of you, mother, father, nobody. Don't ever discipline your children if what they do makes you angry. Why? Because of the fact of that if you do that, you will not be in the right spirit or the right mind to teach them because discipline is about teaching. That's why the scripture says the rod of correction will save their life. It doesn't just mean rod of beating, but it means stiffness of correction. Stiffness of correction will cause your child um, to learn. Stiffness of correction will cause your child to, to, to be able to understand truth. Stiffness of correction will tell your child, this is not good. Now, the word of God tells about a, a high priest named Eli. And Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And um, Eli's two sons was doing wickedness inside the temple. And they were doing all kinds of things that God has instructed them not to. And Eli just said to them, my sons, what you're doing is not good. My sons, what you're doing is not good, right? But he never disciplined them strictly to tell them enough is enough. It is important to know that when we don't discipline our children and we keep drawing the line in the sand and redrawing the line in the sand and redrawing the line in the sand because they keep crossing that line, when you keep redrawing the line, they learn to not respect 
your leadership. They learn not to respect your leadership. And so one of the things I'll tell you that if you're, dis if you're dating somebody, right? I don't believe that somebody dating, that you're dating, um, that you should give carte blanche to, to discipline your children. I don't believe that. I believe that if the person is dating you, that they should be able to, with your authority, give them discipline, but mostly to give the, the, the correction to you so that you, the parent, can discipline that child. Let me see. Uh, family member that are elderly, do many are challenged whether they should let their children go over to that family member's house or stay. Okay, now, before you guys get filled with a lot of questions, let's understand foundational truths first. Okay, let's understand foundational truth before we go. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We got a lot to discuss and we're going to cover every issue God's willing, right? Not tonight, but we're going to cover every issue. It is important to know that we must understand because if you don't have a firm foundation, you cannot build a strong house. And so this is important. Let's have a firm foundation. So I'm going to ask all of you that are watching, please, let's keep our questions. If you have questions outside of what I'm talking, write them down. Send them to me through Messenger or something like that, and then we'll deal with them in line. Let's not get confused tonight. And those of you that are elders and teachers, please do not respond to those questions because you will then um, cause for people's thoughts to be sidebar to another area, another dimension. So it's important. Let's develop foundational truths. Okay. So number one, God gives to parents the ultimate responsibility. It is you, you are accountable and you are responsible to make sure that your children are disciplined and that your children have a knowledge of God, a firm foundation of who God is. That means, parents, if you don't have a firm foundation yourself, if you are confused, if you're not sure how to explain your salvation, if you're not sure you're saved, then before you start teaching your children about God, make sure you know about God. Make sure that you have a knowledge of God. Make sure that you have um, a firm foundation because you can't share what you don't have. That's number one. Number two, it is important to know that children, as we shared with you on so many teachings, children go through stages and God in his infinite mercy and love, God allows for our children to be so dependent upon us. They are dependent when they first come into this world. They want us for everything. They call us for everything. Why? Because that is God in them, bringing them to you, the parent, so that you might discipline. I'm telling you, it is a disservice that I see so many times that parents, uh, because of their busy schedules or whatever the case may be, they're constantly putting their children in somebody else's arms. They're constantly dumping their children in so much somebody else's arms. And this is why when you talk to your child and your child grows up and become a teenager, this is why. I'm going to tell you, don't get offended. This is why many of you are dealing with stuff where you have to yell at your child and you have to tell them, did you hear what I say? And you got to almost threaten them. Why? Because when they were growing up, you kept putting them in somebody else's arms so that you could do whatever else that you had on your agenda. And when you were doing your agenda, somebody else was teaching them something and explaining stuff to them. It may have been grandma. It may have been grandpa. It may have been somebody that have demonstrated a life of, of, of a lack of discipline in their lives. And so now the child looks at you, the person that brought them into the world, right? Can That brought them into the world. The child will look at you and dishonor you. It's important. And, and you know, there, there is hope. For those of you who are experiencing that now, there is great hope for you. And we're going to get there. And I'm going to sort of touch on it tonight so that you don't leave here being like, oh my God, Pastor, this sounds depressing. No, 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 no. It's not depressing, people of God. It's once you know the truth, then you know what you have to do. 
then you know what you have to do. But if you don't know the truth, then you'll keep doing what you're doing and still getting the same results. If you want your children, one of the things I find is that, you know, when I look at even in my own life, right? At this point in time in my life, my children only call me when they're in trouble. When they're in trouble, they'll call me and say, hey, dad, how you doing, dad? Can we hang out with each other? But they're at that age where they feel like they don't need me. They're at that age that, and listen, there became a certain point in time in my life where it was heartbreaking for me. That my little girl no longer wanted to sit on my lap. My, my, my little son was embarrassed about me kissing him and, and all this like that. And, and, and no, they didn't want me driving them to school. They wanted to go with their friends. And no, they didn't want me doing this. They didn't want my attention. And, and whereas before, you know, they used to call me at every little thing that happened. Now I have to hear through the grapevine things that they're accomplishing and things that they're doing. And that made me feel some kind of way. Because deep down inside, you know, we always want our children to be our babies. And some of y'all, you keep saying, you're, well, you'll always be my baby. And, and that child is in their late 20s. That child's in their late 30s, 40s. Some of y'all got babies in their 50s. And you still call them to your babies. Listen, it is time for you to let them grow up. And it's time for you to know that God gives you a season with your child. That's why the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes, and let's turn there because it's important for us to understand. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. It is important to know that God wants us to teach our children as much as they are in our presence. And if you have a child that is, is living rebelliously, but this child still has need of you, right? I'm going to help you tonight. And this child still has need of you. I'm not talking about they being lazy. I'm not talking about them not working. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the, them uh, uh, doing what they can, but they still have need of you. Then guess what? You're in the perfect position to instill in your child the things that maybe you didn't instill earlier. Or maybe you didn't do it enough. It is the perfect opportunity, but you cannot pay and keep supporting their sin. I'm telling you, you do a disservice to them. You do a disservice to you as a parent. You do a disservice to your authority. You do a disservice to them. And then you cause them to mock your authority and their days will not be long. You must draw the line in the sand. You must, ladies, my God, ladies, you must draw the line in the sand. You must teach your child no means no. Stop saying to your child, if you do this, I'm not going to help you. And then when they do it, you still buying birthday gifts and, and, and Christmas gifts and paying their cell phone bill. Y'all see this look on my face? Y'all know you're going to get that at least once a night. I've seen so many times parents teaching their children, ladies, teaching their children, I want you to do well in school. If you don't do well in school, you can forget Christmas. Then Christmas come. The kid get a bad report card. And you still buying Christmas gifts because you feel guilty. You're not teaching them discipline because listen, if they go to work as an adult and the boss says, if you come to work late one more time, you're going to be fired. And they come to late, they come to work late. And when they come to work late, they get fired. And what do they do? They come home and say, Mom, he don't like me. It's not he don't like you. You never learn the disciplines that you need. 
You never learn the disciplines that you need to be able to live this life. Why? Because parents kept drawing the line in the sand and redrawing the line in the sand and redrawing the line in the sand and redrawing the line in the sand. And you keep thinking your child is a victim and your child is not a victim. Once your child becomes old enough to make their own decisions, they are no longer a victim, but they are choosing a certain path of life. That's why why we read in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 17 that the road to life is a disciplined life. In other words, if you want your children to experience life, many, all of us as parents, we want our kids to have a better life than us. We want our kids to have a better experience than us, than my friends. The road to that life is a disciplined life. It is a disciplined life. Your kids will never make it to that life if they don't exhibit discipline. And the only way you're going to teach them discipline is if you say no and you mean it. If you say this is the last time and you mean it. And many parents say, oh, I'm not going to let my kids starve. I ain't going to let. Y'all see this look? Number two, they won't starve. Because the greatest power on earth, the greatest power on earth is when your back is against the wall, it will cause you to make a decision that is better for your life than, than is worst. Because your kids have never had their back against the wall long enough, they don't practice the disciplines that they need. See, those of us who are adults and mature, we know that if we're spending money during the month, if we're spending money during the week, if we're spending money every day, in the back of our minds, we're thinking about when we got to pay rent. We're thinking about when we got to pay the phone bill. We're thinking about when we got to pay the car note. We're thinking about when we got to buy groceries. We're thinking about when we got to keep the lights on. We're thinking about when we got to keep the gas on and pay the water bill and the cable. And we're thinking about all that stuff. And so although we walk into a store and maybe they may have two shoes um, for the price of one, if you know that your count is at its limit, then if you are mature and disciplined, what do you say? You walk out of that store and you don't buy the shoes but because that is discipline that's discipline but when you don't have discipline you spend 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 and then you hope it's going to be there and most times you're disappointed and that's what happens to our kids because our kids, many of them don't have to learn discipline. Why? Because they come to you with a sob story. They come to you um, with a baby that they, that they created. They come to you with um, maybe babies that they created from different women or different men. And they come to you and they pull on your heartstrings. And that baby crying pulls on your heartstrings. And so you keep writing another check. You keep writing another check. You keep going to the ATM. You keep paying for them. 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 Why should they ever learn discipline? As long as you're alive, they don't need a job. You're their job. You're their paycheck. You may not want to hear it, but see this smile on my face? There's love. You're their paycheck. There's no reason for them to get it right. Stop lying to yourself that you paying this bill one more time is going to teach them discipline. No, what's going to teach them discipline is when they don't have a phone and they want a phone and they can't get a phone from you and their girlfriend and boyfriend won't give them a phone. Then guess what? They're going to learn what it takes to get a phone. And they're going to practice those disciplines. They're going to instill those disciplines in their lives. And they're going to do the things that are necessary to keep that phone on. But if you keep paying, stop praying to God. Stop, stop saying, oh, God, help my child. He did already. He sent you. 
to teach them discipline. He sent you to teach them the ways of God. He sent you to tell them no and teach them what life is going to give them. Because nobody, mommy, daddy, nobody is going to baby your baby boy or your baby girl like you. So don't teach them that that's what life is about. And listen, let me tell you how you teach them that. Because if that's the environment that you allow them to experience with you, then they mentally and subconsciously believe that people owe them something. They mentally believe that you owe me this. My mama did it for me. So you got boys looking for girls who can cook just like mama. And I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But think about this. They're also looking for girls who going to spoil them like mama. So when a girl comes who may be better than mama. I know y'all don't want to hear that. When a girl comes that may be better than mama. And she tells your boy, I'm not, I'm not spoiling you. She tells your boy, I'm not saving your behind. She tells your boy, I'm not paying your rent. I'm not going to give you any of my money. You get kicked out, you get kicked out. Then you mothers and fathers jump in the middle of it and go, she's wicked. She's evil. You don't need her. Come to me, baby. I'll take care of you. And they stay lazy for the rest of their lives. And then once that laziness gets in their spirit, they will never change. That's why going back to Proverbs chapter 10, help us, Holy Spirit. This is tight and it's right. That's why there's a lot of men that cannot respect a good woman, a good strong woman who may be better than their mama. I know you mothers out there don't want to hear that. And I know you fathers don't want to hear that some boy going to treat your daughter better than you can. Because your job is to raise the baby to the little girl, to the woman. But it's his job and her job to carry them in adulthood. And so there's a lot of you that think, ain't nobody going to love my baby like me. The devil is a liar. That is a lie and is not of the truth. The fact is, your job as a parent is not to be the greatest love of his life. Your job as a parent is to prepare him for life so that he can go out and, and become someone that has God inside of him to teach the world. See, what honors my mother and father is not that I have a house, a car, a this, a that. What honors my mother and father, what honors my godmother, is that they instilled God in me. And here they are. They're not here. They're not telling me what to do. And guess what? I'm still teaching Jesus. That's honor to them. That's a star in their crown. Because you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. You could, your child could be in the military and has honors up the wazoo. Your child could have awards from every sports arena there is. Your child could have plaques and diplomas and degrees and certificates from every school in, of higher learning. Your child could have all of that. But if they don't have Jesus and if they're not serving Jesus, then my friends, I say this with the love of Jesus Christ, you are failing as a parent if you're not helping them to see Jesus. Now, you can't make them accept Jesus, but you must present him in the clearest of light. You must present discipline in the clearest of light, and it's that child's responsibility to accept it. Now, if your child rejects your teaching, then stop holding guilt about it. Stop acting like, oh my God, I got to help them find another way. No, there's only one way, one truth, one life. You as a parent, your job is to teach them. God taught Adam. 
Adam was supposed to teach his wife and together they were to raise family in the garden when they sinned against God and decided to do things their own way, God said, get out. Y'all don't like that. I've had argument after argument with, with parent after parent, with mother after mother, with father after father. I've had argument. I'm here to tell you that you are doing a disservice to your child if you allow them to dishonor you and to break your rules in your own house. And you dishonor your heavenly father. You dishonor your heavenly father if you let them, if you are a parent and you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't go to clubs and, and you let them come in your house and turn your house into the smoke room at the blue note to turn your house into all, you crazy. And I said it. Yes, yes, I said it. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. I say it unashamedly. It is a shame that parents have honored their children. And that's what God told Eli. He says, I have turned from Eli because Eli honors his children above me. And this is what God, the scripture says that children are a gift from God. Now, I don't know about you, but if I bought somebody a gift and they go, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you for this gift. Right? Right? And I see them throwing the gift in the garbage. Or I see them misusing the gift. In my mind, I'm like, why did I give them the gift? What was the point of me giving the gift? I don't want to give them any more gifts. How do you think God feels when he says children are a gift from God, but we refuse to honor him over our children? Come on, come on, people of God. Do you know how many of us have, um, when we were trying to get our way with our mother and father, we cried, we came with every sob story, we came with every, oh, mommy, he was bothering me, and then I didn't do nothing, and, and mama fell for it a little bit sometimes, she fell for it. You don't think your kid's doing that to you? You don't think your kids are trying to tell you? And I'm talking about sometimes young children. But even some of these old kids, some of these teenagers, some of these uh, in their 20-year-olds, it's like that. Listen, if they're not honoring you and following your disciplines, you are crazy to pay their bills. You are crazy to let them live in your house without cost. Make them pay rent. That's discipline. Because they have to pay rent. You know what? If you ain't going to respect me, then you're going to respect the fact that this is my house. And you're going to pay rent. And if your rent is not on time, you got to get out. You got to get a job. Give them a reasonable time. A reasonable time to find a job. Right? And make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. So if you tell them you got 30 days and you see every day they're getting up at 10, 11 o'clock at night, you, I mean 11 o'clock in the afternoon or, or in the morning rather, you know that that's not good. As a parent, you know that. If they strolling out of bed anytime they want, you know what it takes to find a job. You got to beat that pavement. You got to get out there. You got to get out there early. You can't wait. You can't decide, oh my God, it's raining today, so I'm not going to go out. Oh my God, it's snowing today, so I'm not going to... Here's the third time. Y'all see this look? You can't... If you don't teach them the disciplines, then who will? And what your children will do, especially sons, sons will bounce from girl to girl to girl to girl to girl to girl to girl. Because they know that when you first meet a girl, she's so sweet and she's so kind and she's willing to give you anything. But once that girl start making demands, then that son says, I'm out. That son says, I don't want to be with you. I don't want to hang with you. Why? Because he doesn't have discipline. And he's, if his mama didn't give him discipline, he's not going to receive discipline from some woman. He's not going to receive discipline from another person. 
and that daughter, if her daddy always treated her like a queen and that she could do no wrong and nobody better not touch her, nobody better not say nothing to her. So you got these young girls jumping all in a guy's face, including pushing him in the face, including smacking him. And they like, you better not hit me. Who taught them that foolishness? You did. You taught them that they could get away with anything because they're your queen or they're your little prince. You taught them that they could get away with anything or you allowed for somebody else to teach them. But either way, you're responsible for it. When I look at over the news and I look at different things and I look at a child that get on the bus and you want to smack the bus driver. And then most people, they, oh, my God, the bus driver got up and punched her. Oh, my God. Shame on him. Who's talking about the child? Today on the news, they were talking about that there were children who was in line, in line to go to Harvard, to go to Harvard, Harvard University and Ivy League College. They were in line to go there. But the college checked their background and found out that they were on Facebook and on different social media spewing out hatred, spewing out sexual things all over. And Harvard rejected them and denied their application because they said that these kids do not exemplify the type of student that we want in our school. So you parents can run and you can cry and have your picket sign. Harvard's not being fair. Harvard's not being fair. Oh, give my child another check. Number four. Y'all see the look? It drives me crazy. When I see these boys, even when I was working in Wall Street and I would see these boy, boys coming into the office with their pants hanging down, their shirt Un, um, unironed and, 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 and tie all raggedy uh, looking like this. and I even saw some kids that were in their 20s with a clip on tie and I'm like you coming to Wall Street to work who taught you that when I look at this kid on, on, on yesterday I believe it was this kid teenager decides he wants to walk in a church and he want to walk in the church and he want to start arguing with people to fight with the people in the church. Who taught him that? Or who allowed him to be taught that? Where's the mother or the father that says you will not do that? You will not behave in such a manner. Listen, I would rather my child only have a GED diploma, but they have respect and honor than to have my child with a PhD and they don't have no sort of discipline whatsoever. Because what are you going to do with a PhD? What are you going to do with a master's degree? You're going to go out there and you're going to make a fool of yourself. But if you have honor, if you have discipline, the word of God says before riches, there's honor. Not education, honor. Many of the things that I have been given access to is because my mother taught me respect. My father taught me respect. Elders in my life, my godmother, one of my um, mentor, mentors, Joseph Bain, taught me respect of God's word. So I can go anywhere and I know how to behave. You can take me anywhere and I know how to behave. And many of you know, I'm a, I have a great sense of humor. I love to laugh. I love to play. I love to joke. But when it comes to, if I go into a place and I need to be disciplined and I need to be still, I know how to be still because my parents taught me discipline. And tonight, I want tonight's lesson to be about this question. Have you taken seriously your responsibility to teach your child discipline? Now, before you answer, I want you to look at it totally. Have you taken very seriously your responsibility by God? 
to teach your children discipline and to teach them the knowledge of God. Now, to teach them the knowledge of God is not beating them over the head with scripture. No, to teach them the knowledge of God is to demonstrate it in your own life. That means if you're walking around shacking with this one and this one and this one and this one and you're pointing your children off to somebody else, if you're trying to tell your teenager who's living home with you, if you're trying to tell them how they should live, but you don't know how to live for God, my God, you're teaching them the wrong lesson. You are the one that God chose. And I know we look at our children, we go, oh, these child are so beautiful. And I love children. Y'all know I love children, right? Um, I love children so much, my God. And every time I see a child that, you know, wants love, oh my God, I try to lavish it on them. Every time I see a child that is closed off to love, I try to find a way to give them love. Every time I see a child that is, is undisciplined, even, even years ago, you know, um, when I first um, bought my house, you know, when I would go to church, if there were parents who had children that were wayward, I would tell the parents, hey, let your child come over to my house. Why? Because I knew I was a man of God. I knew I was a man of God and I knew that I wasn't going to play with your kids. But I gave every parent this disclaimer. I said, I will only let your child come to my house if you would allow me to discipline your children as if they were my own. If the parents is like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, keep your child. Because no matter what I teach them, when they come home to you, you're going to defile everything that I teach them. And they're already going to see me as the bad parent. Because I see kids. I see kids now. You know, we got, you know, we got this baby in our church, right? And this baby, this baby sometimes be acting up, right? And every time this baby acting up, I give that baby a look, right? And now when that baby, for the most part, when that baby sees me, and if I'm walking down the aisle, that baby will walk the other way. Why? Because that child, folks may not know it, but I know it. That child knows that brother is not going to let me get away with my junk. They know that. Right. And the other day, for the first time on Sunday, last Sunday, I walked up to her and she was sitting in the child's chair. She looked at me and she had this look in her eyes like a deer in the headlights of a truck. And I went to her and I said, Mwah! and I and I pat her on the forehead and kissed her. And for the first time, this child looked at me and smiled. Right. But prior to that, this child would look at me like if I stand still, he won't see me. You know, this child would just would be paralyzed. Right. Because the one thing I don't like, I don't like a child that doesn't have discipline. A child that doesn't have discipline is a bad child. I know you, you don't want to receive it. Some of you may not want to receive it because you see your own child doesn't have discipline, but there is hope for you. And what you have to do is that you have to begin. If you didn't do it before, you have to begin now. You have to begin now with drawing the line in the sand and saying, you know what? That's it. I paid enough of your bills. That's it. I've covered enough of your expenses. That's it. And you need to draw the line of sand. You need to ask God to give you the strength that you don't have. Because boo-boo, you don't have it. You don't have it. You don't have it. And sometimes some of you are spoiling your children because maybe your mother or your father was hard on you. So you feel like you're going to be extra soft on your kid. But I'm telling you, mama and daddy wasn't right to be so hard on you or maybe be abusive to you. But it is equally so not right for you to spoil that baby. You are only going to give your life heartache and heartbreak. And guess what? Sometimes God sends you people along the way and they tell you, ooh, your child going to break hearts. Ooh, wait till your child grow up. Something going to happen. And some of us, we go, don't you say, don't you put no curse on my child. There is no curse on your child. Uh, children are blank canvases. To which you have the power as a parent to paint on them the disciplines that God has instructed. If you don't do it when they're young, it is harder for you to do it when they're old. However, you can still do it. You have to draw the line. My God, I wish I could talk to you directly. You have to do it throughout their life. How many parents do not support their child's teacher, the child has the parents 
defending their bad behavior in school. I see that. Absolutely, Danielle. Absolutely. Because parents don't want to give their children discipline. They don't want to tell their children no and mean it no. They don't want to hear their child cry. They don't want to hear their child whine. I saw this kid one time in the supermarket. He's in the supermarket and the mother told the kids, come on, come on. I forgot the boy's name. I think the boy's name was Mark or something like that. She was like, come on, Mark. Let's go. Come on. Come on. And the boy was like, no. And she was like, we got to go. And the kid said, no. He ran down the aisle and pulled everything from the front of the aisle all the way to the back of the aisle on the floor. Right? Pulled it, screaming, running around the aisle, taking off. She don't know where the boy went. Right? The little boy only was about, maybe about five years old. Pulled the stuff off the aisle. This woman goes down the aisle and she picks up every last one of them. And then she's walking around the aisle. Mark, Mark. My heart goes out to her. And my heart goes out to each and every one of you who feel like you have to baby your children for them to know the truth. That feel like you have to give them the best of everything. No, the best of everything is you. You. Give them the best of you. Stop trying to win their hearts with trinkets and gifts and cash and vacations and access to whatever you have. Don't call them a man if you're paying all their bills. Don't call them a man if you are um, you, you are holding the, the note to their bank account. You have to teach them the disciplines. You have to teach them the discipline. Believe me. Listen, they will honor you for it. When you're going through it, listen, there was plenty of times when I was a kid and my mom would tear my behind up. My mom would, she would get on my case left and right, get on my case, blah, 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 blah. And I felt she was so hard. There was times, even in my anger, I was like, God, please kill her. You know, I was like mad because I didn't like the discipline. I didn't like the discipline. I didn't like the discipline. People of God, hear me tonight. Your kids don't like the discipline. They don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. Listen, I'm an adult. But if you ask me, Pastor Rodney, would you like me to give you everything you want? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're not doing anything impressive. If you give that child their way, you're not doing anything. That's not being a good parent. It's when you give that hard discipline that teaches that child, if you're too grown to obey my commands, then you're too grown to live here. Now, I want to share something to you. My God, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. Mm. I want you to look at, yes, yes, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 11. And we're going to let you go in a few minutes because we got to really take this. I want this, this part to really marinate in your heart. Because I want the Holy Spirit to help you to become the parent that he's designed you to be. And the only way that's going to happen is if you fully submit to God's will. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 11. It says, even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he does is pure and right. You could try to defend your kid all you want. But if your kid keeps producing garbage, you got to sometime or another, you got to decide. It can't be everybody else's fault and not his fault or her fault. Sooner or later, you got to decide. If I keep bailing them out of trouble or trouble and trouble and trouble, if I keep fixing their messes, their messes, their messes, maybe it's because 
they desire mess. Maybe it's because, maybe you don't want to hear this. That the child that you think, listen, the Bible says, God says, God, who's the perfect parent, God says, all day long, I stretch out my hands to disobedient and gang saying people. He says, I've counseled you to buy of me wine and water that's pure. I counseled you to buy of me gold and silver that's pure. He says, but you did not want it. John, the first chapter, it says that Jesus came unto his own and his own didn't receive him. He says, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. So you know what I've done is that my job as a parent is to teach my children. I don't care about being a good parent or the bad parent. My, my point is to teach my children to, uh, discipline, to teach them correction, and to teach them who God is. They may not like me for it. They may not want me to do it because deep down inside, what's resisting me by teaching them discipline is a lack of discipline, immaturity, and also sin and the devil. When you have sin and the devil and you have immaturity and you have a lack of discipline, those things inside of your child, for the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But it says the rod of correction will drive it away. In other words, the stiffness of correction, the stiffness where you don't bend, you don't budge, you don't feel guilty. No means no. And even if it was an option, even if you could say yes or you could say no, even if you could say, you know, it, it's not right or wrong, but you made a choice as a parent to say no. No means no. Because that's something that they have to learn. Not everybody's going to do what they want them to do. Not every boss is going to allow them to have a day off. Not every um, um, bill collector is going to write off that bill. And they could write it off. But guess what? They may not. So what you're doing is teaching your child how to deal with the no's in life. And it's not about somebody being fair or unfair. It's not about, and y'all parents are crazy, if you allow your children to throw a guilt trip on you, telling you you never supported them. You've got to be out of your cotton picking mind if you think that if you allow your kids to tell you that you have never supported them. You better know who you are. You are a parent. You're not friend. You're not homeboy. You're not their husband. You're not their wives. You are their parent. And yes, Trisha, spoiled children become spoiled adults. And they lose all. Yes, remute. It is reverse psychology. Kids will use anything. Kids will use anything, no matter what it is. And if you got one parent that's soft and the other parents that's a discipline, the kids are going to forget the one that's a disciplinarian and the kids are going to go to the one who's soft. And they're going to come with any kind of sob story to get that parent to, to do for them what the other parent, what they know the other parent won't do. And then what happens, they have the two of you fighting each other. And then some of you women and men that have baby mama and baby daddy drama, you are wrong before God if you blame your ex-husband, ex-boyfriend, baby daddy, baby mama. You are wrong if you blame them in front of that child. You're wrong because you're teaching that child to dishonor their father. And the scripture says, honor your mother and father in the Lord. It says that your days may be long. And listen, let me tell you something. It is never honorable to be dishonorable. I don't care what the situation. Because the Bible teaches us, and I want you to look at this, right? I want you to look at this. Look at Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 22. Um, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 22 to 23. 
Okay, so Proverbs chapter 23, verses 22 to 23. Look at what it says. It says, listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom instruct and instruction and understanding. Okay, so if a child has a father that is not behaving right, you, the mother, is supposed to teach that child, honor your father. Honor your father. Why? Because if he honors his father or if she honors their father, what that child will grow up, that child in honor their father will learn by watching their father's life or watching their mother's life that their choices have allowed them to fall to such despair. And that alone will teach them what not to be in their lives. But if you teach them to dishonor their father, then when you cause that child to hate their father, if you cause that child, and God bless you, Elder Justin, if you cause that child to hate their father, and if you cause that child to hate their mother men, if you cause that child to hate their father and mother, the word of God says by the prophet Job, the thing that I feared or that I hated the most has come upon me. So that child is apt to repeat the same garbage, for the Bible says, judge not and you shall not be judged. So the way that child judged their father, if they judged that father because the mother told the father, told the kids that, oh my God, your father is a dog. Your father is a bum. I had to do everything. And, and I had to be mother and father. Your father didn't do nothing for me. The lies. The lies she tells. Because if he didn't do nothing for you, then why did you lay down with him? If he didn't do nothing for you, you say, well, pastor, he didn't do nothing after I got pregnant. Then you should also blame yourself because you chose to be with him. Don't dishonor a child's parent. When I went through what I went through early in life, I refuse to dishonor my children's mother. I refuse. I won't do it. And I learned this very important principle. The principle that most husbands have never learned. The scripture says, husband, love your wives and give your lives for her. What does that mean? That means husbands love your wife. And if anybody has to go through and take it, let it be you and not her. Protect her. Cover her, watch over her, shield her. That's what Jesus did for the church. The church was wrong because the church crucified him. The people who were purporting themselves as being children of God, the people who said that they are uh, the leaders of the nation of Israel, they crucified Jesus. And Jesus still said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Stephen was being stoned by the very same people that he looks up into heaven and said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. And you women and men who have dishonored your husband and wife, you need to repent tonight before God. You who have said negative words about the person that you chose, about the person that you chose to lay down it maybe once, twice, three times, maybe 300 times, the one that you chose to marry, the one that you chose to be with, the one that you chose to have a baby with. If you dishonored them, I don't care what they did, you need to repent and you need to ask for forgiveness. And then the next time your child says something negative about their spouse, you need to say before about their daddy or their mother, you need to say before that child, child, don't say that. Forgive me for teaching you to dishonor your father. Because God is not pleased with it. My God. Because the book of Malachi... My God, Malachi, the last chapter of the Old Testament. Thank you, Lord. Glory to his name. And y'all, you, you just accept my intensity tonight. 
as being my passion. I'm not angry, not frustrated, passion. Okay? Look at Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5 and 6. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Keep dishonoring the children's father. Not good. Not good. Not good. Because the very life and blood of that mother and father is in that child. So for you to curse that father or to curse that mother, you're cursing parts of you, you're cursing parts of your child. Forgive. The word of God says, do good unto those who despitefully use you. The scripture says, do not render evil for evil, but render good for evil. This is the ways of God. And, and it doesn't feel comfortable with us. And honestly, our flesh don't like it. Our flesh doesn't like to take responsibility. Our flesh doesn't like to, to say, I'm sorry. Our flesh wants to feel like we're justified for everything that we said and everything that we did. And I'm here to tell you that the reason why some of us are having such a hard time with our children and the reason why we're carrying so much guilt and the reason why we're carrying so much condemnation and the reason why there's so much inner turmoil and frustration is because we're not doing it God's way. We're doing it our way. We're doing what's comfortable. The scripture says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. It is important to know that when we choose to do things our way, we will not get God's results. And listen, I'm a firm believer, and by faith, I stand on this. I stand on this that I raised my children in the knowledge and admonition of the Lord. So it doesn't matter to me what they do. When they come to me, all they get is discipline. You want to call me whatever you want to call me. You want to uh, dishonor me anytime you want to dishonor me. But let me tell you something. When I, my kids see me, they're going to see love. They're going to see discipline. And they're going to see Jesus. Nothing else. Nothing else. I'm not your ATM. I'm not your cash cow. Let me use a phrase that mama used to say. Money don't grow on trees. And y'all are crazy. God has blessed you with wealth. God has blessed you with favor. God has blessed you with um, anointing. God has blessed you with all of that. But you lack wisdom. When you are spoiling your children when you're not teaching them discipline and when you're not teaching them the stiffness of God's will for their life. And we're going to get into, my God, we can't get into it tonight because it'd be too long. Uh, we're going to get into when it comes to, um, you know, friends and friendship and how to deal with those parents and those grandparents uh, because it, it takes wisdom. You don't want to start wars for some people, if they're friends or boyfriends or whatever case would be, and they're teaching your children madness in your house, my God, you better lock the door and change the locks. I don't care how much your body is aching and breaking for him. I don't care how much, you know, you want to fake like you're a child of God on Sunday, but on Saturday night, you were doing what you want to do. I don't, wanna, I don't care about that stuff. I'm saying to you, if you have anybody in your house, coming to your house, in your life, that is teaching your children other than discipline and other than the words of God, you are crazy and you're only giving heartache to your life. You're only, mm, you're only messing up your tenure on this earth and you don't have forever. And some of you don't realize, I've seen people, I had to counsel families who mother and father were spoiling the children all their lives. And then God forbid the mother and father die. And now the kids get your insurance. They get your house. They get your car. They get your clothes. They get all that stuff. And they blow it in less than two years. 
all the stuff you worked for. Solomon, the wisest man in all the world, said, he says, what good is it for me to work so hard to save my money and give it to a child that's a fool? So what should I teach my child? Should I get my child? Oh, let me put away every dime so my child could go to college. Okay. So you put away, that sounds good. So you put away every dime so your child can go to college, but your child never learned discipline. So your child go to college on your paycheck, go to college on your paycheck, and they're smoking weed, they're getting high, they're taking drugs, they're going to parties, they're you know, joining frats, they're getting arrested, they're getting all this stuff like that. And you feel, oh, my child is in college. Number five, y'all see the look? Number five, the fifth time tonight. Teach your child wisdom. And if they don't have a dime, they'll learn what to do. My mother used to buy bonds. She used to buy bonds, every paycheck, bonds, 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 bonds. And she had our names on the bonds and she had all these names on the bond, right? By the time we got to the age to cash it, the bonds wasn't worth nothing that she put into it. But thank God, my mother didn't just put away money, but she taught us discipline. She taught us respect. She taught us honor. Okay? And my mother decided, you know what, after I done told you all that, she said, wait a minute. And she took this boy, Rodney, I was the youngest of six. And she says, okay, I taught you discipline. I taught you honor. I taught you all this stuff like that. Now let me teach you how to cook. Now let me teach you how to sew. Now let me teach you how to um, crochet. Let me teach you how to do this. Let me teach you how to plant. Let me teach you how to do this. So little did she know that I would be in a situation where here I am living alone. And guess what? I'm not wasting my time. I know how to take care of myself. I know how to be honorable. I know how to be respectful. I know how to respect other people's property. Your kid taking your car and doing Papa Wheelies and you get, they get into an accident and then you get the next insurance policy and you put them back on the policy. You crazy. You crazy. Silly. Silly. But they need a car because if they have a car, they can get to work quicker. But they're constantly late for work, even though they got the car. I know kids that their mother buy the car, the kids crash the car up, the mother buy a new car, and then she tell the kid, pick me up from work at four o'clock. And that kid hanging out with his friends and his buddies, and here it is, 445, 450, 5 o'clock, 515, and you call him, where are you? And he go, oh, my, I lost track of time. Number six. Who's teaching them that? You are. You are. Thank God when God allows us to have opportunities with our children because there becomes a point in time in our kids' lives where they feel like they don't need us anymore, where they feel like they are grown enough to make their own decisions. And these are natural um, growth times of their lives, you know, um, because when I was younger, I used to call on my mother for everything. I remember when I was five and six years old, I used to wake up early on Saturday mornings and like, ma, I want pancakes, ma, I want pancakes, ma, I want pancakes. And my mother got so tired of me waking up early Saturday morning after she done worked the whole week. My mother got up one Saturday morning. She said, come on. She took me in the kitchen and she taught me how to make pancakes for the first about month or so. Oh, I burned a whole lot of pancakes. I threw them in the garbage. I wasted a whole lot of batter. But to this day, I can make pancakes with my eyes closed. And I make them good, better than IHOP. Let me tell you something. And my mother taught me the disciplines, right? She taught me how to cook. She taught me how to take care of myself. She taught me respect and honor. And so when I come into somebody else's house, I don't dishonor their home. I don't just throw my clothes where I want. Why? Because I couldn't do it at my mother's house. 
So I pick up my own clothes. I don't just throw clothes on the floor and leave them there and mildew and spiders and bugs and, and a thousand legs and millipedes and all that sort of that is growing underneath your clothes because they've been stacked under there because nobody taught you discipline. Why? Because you left those kids you made those kids not wash their own clothes. You made those kids leave their clothes until you're ready. Some of your kids got their own place and you said, hey, listen, the kid go, ma, I ain't got no money to wash my clothes. you like, boo-boo, bring your clothes on my house. I got this brand new machine. Now your machine is breaking and not near one of them are offering $10 to fix it. Number seven. And that's what I want you to receive tonight. Receive tonight with the love of Jesus Christ. That as a parent, it is your job to discipline your children and to teach them the knowledge of God. And for those of you who are grandparents, if your child dropped that child over your house, then be honorable. Do not dishonor your child, that baby's mother or father, in that child's ears. Don't dishonor them. Don't let nobody else dishonor them because you don't want that child raising up dishonoring their mother. Stop babying them, mother. Stop treating them like they're your little baby, your little boo-boo, your little sugar bear. Stop telling them that because you're dishonoring your child in front, you're dishonoring your child in front of their child. And God gave that child to them. So your job is to support them in their leadership. Now, if they don't have no leadership, then you must take responsibility for that and you must teach them outside of the child. You can't let the child know. You can't let the child hear because the child will see you as parent and not them. So you have to teach your child the disciplines. Tell your child, no. Personally, I do not believe in grandparents taking care of kids so that their parents may go out to a party. I don't believe in that. I think that's foolish. No. If you had this child, now you must be responsible to take care of this child. Some of y'all are taking care of the children, the grandchildren for the weekend. So that child can go out there and that child can go out there and you, they ain't working. They're not in school. They shacked up with somebody else soon to give you another child. So you can take care of that one too. You won't let them buy clothes for them because you're constantly buying clothes for them. And so they never learn how to Yes, Trisha, they never learn how to take care of their own children. That's God, that's a God-given responsibility. Stop taking it from them. Stop taking it from them. Grandparents, stop taking it from them. Stop taking it from them. This is their responsibility given by God. Your responsibility is to raise your own children. And when you have grandchildren, your responsibility is to teach your grandchildren to honor their mother and father. And if they have husbands and wives, baby father and baby daddies, you should not be teaching that child to dis that grandchild to dishonor their father and their mother. It's a sin and a shame. And I see it over and over again. I'm talking about godly people. That come here, baby, because you know your daddy ain't no good. Don't worry, grandma got you. Lord, help you. Lord, help you. Because you're shortening that child's life. And you're teaching that child to become exactly what you hate. And so, let us pray tonight. We are praying that God would help us and clean our hearts, clean our minds so that we might fully understand, we must fully understand 
You said you weren't making that one. <laughs> I like that, Ramute. <laughs> um, so that we might fully understand God's way. God's way is the best way. Amen. So let us pray tonight, and we're going to continue on Friday. We're going to continue on Friday, and so let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word that was shared tonight. And Father, I pray that if there's any sorrow, that it would be godly sorrow, and that, Father, you would cause us to repent, that you would cause us, Father, to do what you have called us to do as parents and as grandparents. Help us, Father. For as it relates to our children, Father, it is quite difficult, and we know you understand. For you know us from our uprising and our down sitting. God, you know everything about us. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give us, parents, the discipline that we need to discipline our children. Give us the strength of heart. Give us courage. Give us boldness. And, Father, don't allow us to be weak. Don't allow us, Lord God, to be soft-soaping our children, but cause us, Father, in the name of Jesus, to take a hold of this responsibility that you have given us. You have laid it upon us. You've laid it upon us, God, because these children could have died before they were born, but because they are here, everything that's within us is, is capable of teaching them. If we look to you and you told us if any man or woman lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it freely. Father, help us in the name of Jesus that we might have wisdom as parents. Touch every grandparent watching tonight. I pray God in Jesus' name that we would never usurp the authority of the children's parents that we would never stand in the way of the children um, learning from their mother and father and respecting their mother and father. Forgive those parents and grandparents, Lord God, who have dishonored the baby's father or the baby's mother. Forgive us for saying every any negative word against them. For Father, you are not pleased. And help us, Father. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in our sight and in your sight, God, for you are our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. So, Father, have mercy upon us and teach us your holy way. And God, I pray right now in Jesus' name, as we continue this study, I pray, God, that you would cause it to spread wildly around the world and cause for your people worldwide to change, that we will be followers of Jesus Christ and followers of your word obedient, for you said obedience is better than sacrifice. So help us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, we will give your name all glory, honor, and praise, for you alone are worthy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. If there's anything that I may uh, talk about or touch on any particular subject that's specific for you, send me a message outside of this video and um and I'll do my best by the help of the Holy Spirit to answer it in the teachings to come. And so God bless you all. I love you all in the name of Jesus. Please take every t uh, lesson that I've taught you tonight as love, love from the Heavenly Father and love from this Father, this Father who is a man who loves God and wants to see the people of God live a life that is pleasing in, his, in God's sight. And so God bless you. God bless you, Lamont. God bless you, Queenie. God bless you, Earlene, Jacqueline. God bless you, Angela. God bless you, Dawn. Yes, in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Daniel. You're welcome. God bless you, Hillis. Amen. Glory to his name. God bless you all. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. I'll see you on Friday. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and with those who you think may be blessed by it. Amen. God bless you, Lori. God bless you, Elder Justin. Thank you. I received that. God bless you, Tricia. Amen. Glory to his name. Yes, keep me in your prayers. Amen. God bless you, Joanne. Dawn, thank you. Blessings and favor. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Melinda, God bless you. Sheree, you're welcome. God bless you. Amen. And for those friends of yours who are outside of Facebook, I'll be posting this video 
on YouTube forward slash smiling solution. Um, and then those who are not on Facebook could see it on YouTube. And so God bless you. I love you all real good. I'm going to sign off now so I can get started with uploading that video. And so have a blessed and marvelous evening in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Have a blessed night. God bless you, Angela.